hello America. It's this week's Camping Corner and it looks a little weird. What's weird about it? You're on the other side of the camera normally. I know this feels so weird. Hey guys, it feels very weird actually. Yeah. But I did get my check this morning from the producer for being a talent today, so that was nice. Oh uh, yeah. 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 yeah I wrote it myself was, a check. Yeah. It was it was small. It's still a check. I mean, it's a big check with little numbers on it. <laughs> it's bigger than the check you got. Hey. It probably is. <laughs> so, hey guys, if you haven't figured out, uh, Mallory is on vacation this week. So, we had to have a co-host and our junior executive, vice president, director, key grip, something Greer wouldn't sit on this side of the camera. So, she's behind the camera today. And that brings our good friend, Mr. Dan Plumley. Hey guys, I'm excited to uh, be on the show. I mean, it feels weird being on this side a little bit, but I'm excited. I begged Greer to do it. She basically told me she would quit if I put her over here. So here we are. Yeah. yeah. But hey, we're you know as always, we're gonna have a mediocre at best show. Subpar. Absolutely subpar. You know, <laughs> hey, it, it couldn't get much worse. No, you and Mallory <laughs> have done a great job of setting the bar really low. I feel like we could come in on this. So. You want to jump right into what's the buzz? Let's do what's the buzz. I'll even let you kick it off. Okay, so guys, as you know, I'm behind the camera on this, but I'm also one of two people that's behind the scenes on our social media. So all of your photos and videos that you get that you send in, I get and I share on our social media, and I absolutely love it. it I, when I put the captions, I love, love, love this. I really mean I love this. I mean, I tell you guys all the time encourage your people to share this stuff I think it helps really highlight what we do and what this is all about sure and for me going out and shooting a video of a camper on the lot is great it gives people a perspective and stuff but there's nothing better than seeing a camper in the wild you yeah. know what I mean yeah absolutely. so this one came in from S and S RV adventures they said uh, I posted one of our Raptors the other day and they immediately fired back and said we're loving our 351 Thanks for taking such great care of us during our purchase. Yeah. So, I mean, look at that. They've got their toys out there. I mean, it's beautiful. Yeah. So that's uh, that's Steve and Sherry. Uh-huh. Uh, I, I had the luxury of, of dealing with them. They're absolutely phenomenal people, and they love their Raptor. Um, so they're super excited, and they love us. So that's a great thing, too. Yeah, yeah. Guys, keep sharing. Listen, you can never share too much with me. Uh, Steve and Sherry, is that what you said? Steve and Sherry. Steve and Sherry, keep the pictures coming. I'd love to see it. And I would also love to see a picture where you've got all your toys in the back and what that looks like. So not a lot of people share with us the before setup. They show us the after setup. All right. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So at, we're, we're in that. I, and I saw a great breakdown the other day of the seasons. Uh, of course, we're here in Indiana. So mm -hmm. the seasons in Indiana, and there was like spring fake spring not you know not really spring yet right you know, right da, 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 da. and then like right now we're in Hades front porch for summer yeah yeah um, but as we work our way through this two big questions do people like to camp more in the fall or in the summer yeah we had a lot of really good responses me personally I'm probably gonna shock a lot of people I like the fall I'll tell you why I like the scenery I mean, I love the green of the summer. That's great. But, like, if you go down to Gatlinburg or someplace like that, the changing leaves are beautiful. Absolutely. But I also love using my fireplace. Like, kick that on in the early mornings when you're having your coffee right. or late in the evenings, get a little cozy. Um, but I also don't like the fall because that kind of signifies it's coming close to the end of camping season. Yeah. You know? Yeah. What about yourself? So, I obviously, camping, you know, when the leaves change, there's nothing, nothing more beautiful than the leaves change. Let's face it, the nicest spot in the campgrounds underneath the biggest shade tree. And if you can sit out in those fall evenings um, just before the sun sets and you get all the, the sun bouncing off all the, the colors of the leaves, oh, yeah. it's absolutely stunning. The other thing I like about fall is it makes people put on clothes that don't have any business wearing shorts and tank tops and <laughs> cut off sleeve t-shirts. I've seen, I've seen some unique outfits over the years in the campground. It's almost like people... Forget they're still in the public. Yes. Uh, yeah. it, it leads to great entertainment. Yeah. But yeah, there's a few times where I'm like, ah. yeah. and and I get it. We all we all think, well, it's a campground. Nobody cares. Oh yeah, right. people care. Yeah, people care. People, people care. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> I agree. 
So, I posted this one the other day because, well, it rang true to me. Who else loves the sounds of crickets and frogs when the sun goes down? Absolutely. I mean, there's nothing better than kicking back after everybody's left. Well, I'll say even just around the fire when friends and family are around, but then after everybody's left and maybe you're having that one final nightcap for the evening, just chilling on the front porch, it's quiet, that's all you hear, it's great. Well, you said nightcap. I was going to say along with that, the, the sounds of the crickets and the frogs are the occasional <laughs> yep fork. yep and you can hear it yeah. it's the ring throughout the camper oh, yeah. yeah you can hear people four camp sites down when they oh uh, yeah or my wife's a wine drinker so that yep when she pulls the cork out of the wine bottle but you know what it is oh yeah, yeah you, know you, exactly you know exactly what it is. Exactly hey what that somebody's is. having a great time at the <laughs> so i personally i love this i love 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 this even though i didn't comment on it um, you know, absolutely love seeing campers out in the wild. I love the uh, fact that we've got a thin blue line flag on the yep. front of this. It means yep. you know tremendous amount to me. Yep. And uh, so absolutely amazing seeing that. Again, it's great, great, great seeing these out in the wild. I will 99.999% of the time either share it as soon as you send it to me or shortly after, they do really well on social. I mean, a lot of people like seeing this. It, Like I said, it puts it into perspective. This is what it looks like. My favorite, and I don't care if you stage it, is when you've got the little happy rugrats running around, you know, so you can really see. And I think something that I appreciated when I started getting camping, I'm a dad, you're a dad, was it's almost like a switch goes off when you hit that campground and it's all about family time. Sure. And so spending that time disconnected and really interacting with your family and stuff is great. So I love seeing the pictures of like the dad holding the little kid's hand, walking down to the fishing, you know, the fishing pond or whatever. It's just, it's amazing. So, you know, to add to that, one of the things that I notice in the campground, you know, you and I both season, you know, have have seasonal spots, right. and you travel you travel uh, you know a fair amount. But one of the things that's amazing, I have a 13 year old mm-hmm. who always has his phone in his hand. He's always connected. Right. And I love the fact that in the campground, we see kids doing what what we did growing up, riding their bicycles. Yep. Running through the woods, playing tag, playing hide and go seek, doing all that stuff. Yep. But they're not carrying their phones. Nope. Yep. They're disconnected, and it's such an amazing thing. And we're seeing all these new people because of our new, the new norm. Right. You know, where we're at now with, with COVID-19 and the coronavirus, we've seen all these new people who are coming into the RV industry and coming into camping that, in their mind, it's all because they're not going to a hotel. They're not getting on an airplane. Right. They don't realize the amazing things that are going to happen when, with their families. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know? And then, you know, the last thing really that I have to say about that is my, you know, my Colt and my 13 year old, they start school on Wednesday. So this is, this is the last weekend, not that we'll be at the campground because we'll still be there every weekend, but this is the last weekend of summer vacation for my 13 year old before he goes back to school. Summer has went by. Yeah. We shared one last thing we shared in an early, early episode. I don't remember which one it was, but we shared, uh, I forget who did that poll, but they ran that poll with teenagers talking about, do you feel like you have to have your phone at the campground? Remember that? And and the vast majority were like, no, I don't feel like I, because to your point, they're doing like what we did when we were kids. We didn't have a phone. So our social media was running over to yeah. our friend and being like, hey, I just did this. Yeah. That was our Instagram post. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. So, yeah, it is it is really, really cool to see. And, man, I can't believe we're coming to the end of summer. Yeah, I just can't. it's crazy. So with other information around the web. Uh-huh. Oh, wait, so we're joining around, we're doing around the web right we're now. We're doing around the web. Okay, so we're done with What's the Bus. I don't think we have anything else for What's the Bus. We don't. So this is around the web. We're going to do around the web. Okay, let's the do it. The first one I forgot is from Keystone's website. Okay, so Keystone's website. Go ahead. All right. So this is top boondocking spots near national parks. Okay. So just so if, if you're new to the show, if you're new to camping, if you're new to RVing, you're new to the boondocking means you're not hooked up to electricity unless you're carrying a generator with you. Right. You're not hooked up to a water source, so you're taking your own water. So you are... You're in, you're in it. I you're mean, off you're, the grid. You're off the you're grid. off yeah. the grid. You're off the grid. Uh, except for the fact that you're 
Well, I mean, you could be in a you could be in a tent too. There, we're not we're we're not we're not snobs. We're not trailer. No, trailer you snobs. can be in a tent. Yeah, I mean, tent. I wouldn't be in a tent, right. but you could be in a tent. Yeah, I'm out. So, Joshua Tree National Park. I have not been there, but I've heard nothing but great things. Of course, it's famous from the music. Uh, what's the band that came out with Joshua Tree album? Was that you two? Yeah, I, I won't I say yeah. I won't say their name. Why? Because I don't like them. Yeah, but you can still say their name. Is it U2? Yeah, I went to one of their concerts. Okay, so it's U2. I'm not a huge Bono YouTube fan either, but I can still acknowledge that they had a album called Joshua Tree. I don't know that they had an album named Joshua Tree. Guys, okay, so we're just gonna we're gonna cut this right here because this will go on all day. Let us know. Was it U2 that had an album Joshua Tree? Greer saying yes. I'm saying yes. Tony is saying either he hates you two or he doesn't know. Uh, both. <laughs> okay. Okay. So moving on. What's our What's our next national park? Yellowstone National Park. Beautiful, beautiful place. Absolutely stunning. Went there as a kid. Loved every single minute of it. My favorite part, I have to share this. I'm going to do a Tony story. My favorite part is we're walking through the park. My mom has one of those brochures and stuff. And she looks over at my dad, so serious. She says, Gary, she says, we've got to watch out for these beeson. And she's like, I, I don't know what, like, where are they at and stuff. And my dad, with the straightest face, he, he, he said, honey, that's bison. And she's like, that's buffalo. Right. So you don't need to be looking down on the ground. <laughs> You're going to know yeah. when you see a buffalo. But... Yeah. Beautiful place. Uh, my wife and I have talked several times about taking the camper out there, doing like a two-week trek out to sure. Yellowstone and back. Would be beautiful. Yeah, beautiful. absolutely. It's you know, uh, it, it, it is. It's beautiful. It's stunning. Badlands. Badlands National Park. Which you get to hit on your way to Yellowstone. Right. Like you can Badlands Yellowstone. Right. Or I guess you could bypass it and come back to yeah. it. Whatever you want. Yeah. It's stunning. Beautiful. Beautiful. Stunning. Absolutely beautiful. I'm gonna leave that next one to you, bud. That's uh, Can I Fjords. National Park. Which I love because Fjord sounds like Fords. Matthias, that bud, right? I, Matthias is quickly becoming my friend and less your friend. I'm just saying. Okay. <laughs> See, I feel like it's almost like you two. Are we having were, a draft? You are, are going to have a draft. <laughs> a friend draft? <laughs> <laughs> so where is Kenya Fjords? Can I? Can I Fjords? Where's that? I don't know. Let's let's Google that executive assistant. Yeah, get on that. Get on that junior executive assistant because we need to know where. Key grip, boom <laughs> operator. So while we're waiting on her, the last one that we had in our top five was Carlbad's Caverns National Park and Guadalupe Mountains National Park. What? Guadalupe. 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 It's in Alaska and mm -hmm. it has just snow everywhere, water everywhere, super pretty. Ooh, okay. Snow and water. Snow and water. <laughs> Those are... Look over there. <laughs> There's, There's water. <laughs> over there. There's snow. There's snow on the top and water on the bottom. There, there you go. <laughs> Absolutely. So this next thing, Tony, she, uh, Greer, found this, and I actually heard it on the radio the other day. I'd heard Nathan, um, our GM here, alluding to it a few times, but I heard it on the radio and kind of did a like a, yeah, which was Congress passing that Great American Outdoors Act. And, you know... As with anything legal and all that stuff, there's a ton to it, but really what it comes down to is that they're valuing these state and national parks and they're valuing the recreational industry. <laughs> so they're gonna dump money into this to make sure that there's clean camping sites and great camping sites. So a big win for not just the RV industry, but people in general, sure. like to keep that going. You know what Absolutely. I mean? Absolutely. You know, and I think, uh, again, to, to reference back to where we're at now, you know, with our new norm, uh, you know, I think for a lot of people, it's more important than ever to, to ex get the opportunity to get out and experience some of those things. Absolutely. Since we're supposed to be social distancing and we're supposed to be wearing masks and yep. we're supposed to be, you know, still tons of businesses and things like that that are closed. No concerts, no, uh, unfortunately, because of the current situation, all those places that, for the most part, that you would go to blow off steam and just relax and reset, whether it be a live music event or anything right. like that, those are all canceled. Right. So now being able to, to get out and experience those things in the campgrounds or 
on Bureau of Land Management, uh, you know, property, uh, things like that, gives you a chance to reset and just reconnect and, and get back and get a grip on, on life. I, mean, I agree. I agree. We were we were talking the other night about the whole, wife and I were talking about the whole so, social distancing thing. And, you know, we take the camper down to Golf Shores every year. And we're thinking, okay, so if we really wanted to social distance, we wanted to maintain on the trek down, we're going to have some mild interactions at gas stations. Got to right. stop and get fuel, maybe a few snacks, go to sure. the bathroom. Uh, a interaction with the campground staff when we check in. Right. And then we could literally spend the rest of the week in our camp spot or a small spot on the beach. Sure. Not interact with anyone. Right. Pick up our groceries, bring them back to the camper, right. cook, all that stuff. So, I mean, it, it truly is a, a easy way to social distance. Yeah. 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 yeah I don't think... I don't think I'm no expert. These and and the views shared are my opinions and my opinions only. I don't think you can catch the Rona <laughs> from waving at the people in the next campsite. I don't think so. I, I haven't seen a statistic coming out about that. So. Yeah, no, I think we're good. I don't think so. I think we're good. So, moving on. Greer also found some popular RV camping gadgets on Amazon. So these were like the top gadgets that you have to have right. on Amazon. Okay. Right. The first one, Hawator Hawa, Portable Elastic Clothesline. I'm going to go with Hawator. So really, okay, so it's a bungee cord, and it's got those little, of course you can see it right here, but she's got those little crimpy things. Right. Why it's called a Hawator, I don't know, but it's, it's, it's pretty cool. I mean, sure. we bought one of those ones that hook on your rear bumper. So they got the two little pieces of hook on. You put right. them on there. It's got the string. But I mean, that's pretty. That's pretty creative. Yeah. All right. So it's like one hundred fourteen dollars and ninety two cents, and you could make it out of a bungee cord and you know some chip clips. Yeah, but it wouldn't be a Hawator if you made it yourself. No. You're paying for the name. And and so let me ask you this. So you you have one. What, I mean, what really do you need? Shorts, t-shirts, and flip flops. That's really all you need. You're right. You're right. But so we. Well, you can go, dry your flip flops out like that. Yeah, just smack them together. Yeah. And they make a cool noise. Well, if you have a dress or something, you're going out, you know. I don't wear a lot of dresses. It's got to be a very special occasion to see me in an evening gown. I mean, a very special occasion. I mean, the red carpet, I'm, I, but I've never gotten invited. So. Right, right, but I have my dress ready. But I keep my ankles covered. Um, well, when we go down to Gulf Shores for like a week, we don't pack a lot. So rather than to pack a lot, we pack a little. And then periodically just wash it, throw it out on the dryer. Or swim trunks. Like you get back, you take swim trunks, hang them up out there, let them dry, and you're good. Because there's nothing worse than putting on cold, wet swimming trunks. But that's true. That's <laughs> I don't true. care how hot it is outside. That's true. It's miserable. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So uh, next was uh, Weller's Wheeler's Kitchen Cutting Board. And it opens up, and it's got all your little cutting utensils. You know, it's got cutting utensils inside it. It's got, you know, kitchen shears, uh, a knife, and then uh, looks like it's got a knife sharpener, which is one of those things that if people don't know how to use it, the only thing they do is cut themselves. Yes. Shh, shh, this shh, is definitely. Shh, shh. I'm just gonna say it. This is definitely. I would add this to my like man tool arsenal. You know, because when you go out to grill or whatever, especially I use my Blackstone. I know you use your Blackstone. You cook anything on that yeah. thing. So if I'm going to go out there and chop up vegetables, I'm going to pull out my awesome little carrying case. I got my cutting board. I got my fancy knife in there. I mean, I'm just going to look. I'm going to look the part. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Uh, okay, so Camco sewer hose support. I Thought these were probably the dorkiest thing I'd ever seen when I initially saw people using them, until I started traveling to some different campgrounds with some different elevations, sure. and I couldn't get the fecal freeway to flow correctly, so I went as, as polite as I could yeah. on that. So these are great, because they kind of lift it up, they give you a little support to yeah. get it's a racetrack for the stinky sling. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Absolutely. All right, so she only gave us one, two, three. All right, so top three items. Sorry, I should have said that. I, I thought maybe we had four or five, but we only have three. But that's fine. Best three. So if you at home have found some cool gadgets on Amazon or any other website that you think is a necessity for camping, send it in to us. We'd absolutely. like to see it. Or made their own. I want 
So I, I have to admit, so you were talking about that. We were talking about the little folding cutting board. I tell Stacy that I want, I want like a, a belt that, that I can put my knife, you know, when I'm at the grill and like my spatula yeah. and seasonings on and all that stuff. So it's just like right there. And you Is can, it going <sighs> to have a beer holder? Yes. So yeah. Would you go dual beer holders in the front and then knives and accessories along you know, the back? I think realistically, if I'm going to do a dual beer holder, I want one of the, <laughs> I want one of the the like look like a baseball hat yeah, with yeah. the two and then the the little straw that comes down. Look, because now your hands free. I was going to say that's a safety thing. You're being smart. You're keeping both of these guys free to man the food. You don't want to burn your steak. I know. So I know. that's smart. That's smart. I like where you're at in that. Okay, so Greer found this this little comic strip, and you can probably hear her giggling in the background. She thought this was hilarious, okay? <laughs> I'm just going to read it to you, Tony, and you tell me what you think. In a turn of events, few could have foreseen there was a sudden recall of all new motorhomes featuring doggy doors. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want your poor little doggo going bouncing down the road. Oh, no. No. That, See? That, Listen to her. <laughs> She's giggling now. Yeah, so if anything, we just highlighted and made Greer's day with this. Yeah. yeah. Right? Uh, yeah. It, it's it. Yeah, that would be a horrible, horrible thing. Okay, so now we are to Gadget Corner. So the lovely Greer hand model. Who didn't even lean in far enough to get her hands in. No, she's like, I'm not even going to be seen on this. So, Tony, what are these? Those are X chocks, Dan. Okay, and what do X chocks do, Tony? Those are uh, uh, those are B A L X chocks, and you install them uh, when you get to your campsite. Uh huh. In between the tires. Uh huh. So you got a tandem axle trailer. They go in there. They come with a little ratchet. Uh huh. Goes out, and it just gives you some support. A lot of people forget about the fact that your stabilizer jacks or your leveling jacks go down, and they give you a lot of support left to right, Mm -hmm. but they don't necessarily give you a ton of support forward and backwards. Right. So that just keeps your, you know, locks your wheels in so they don't move around a little bit. uh, So they don't work on single axle campers. They do not. (laughs) You have to have the little 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 wedge chocks. chocks. We actually had these on our camper. Uh, We didn't have them for the first year, I don't think. And you can definitely feel that, like if you took off towards the front of the camper or the back of the camper, you like, can like, kind the, of, like the camper was trying to yeah, scroll out. Yeah, you can kind of you. feel, yeah, a little bit of that. This gets rid of all that. And uh, what would be your starting bid on an estimated price for these, Tony? Are we playing the prices right? Oh, those are those are priceless. Good point. Fair enough. Okay, so there you guys have it. X chocks. And they're available, like, everywhere. Yeah. Like, literally everywhere. And, for those of you that don't know, they are available not only in a standard axle configuration, but there's also an extended set for, for those of you that have uh, the extended axle systems, like on the Passports uh-huh. or some of the other lightweight brands that move the axles a little farther apart. There is a bigger set that works for those as well. I did not know that. You are just a wealth of knowledge, my friend. Virtual cornucopia of useless knowledge, sir. Have you noticed that when I'm behind the camera, I insult you. When I'm in front of the camera, I compliment you. Yeah. Thank you. So, it's time for... What the what? What the what? Who do you? <laughs> Greer found some real gems here. This first one, <laughs> I don't know if this is offensive, but I'm going to go ahead and say it, okay? Because I don't know. I feel like it's not offensive, but it, but it very well could be. Better you than me, because this will be the only week you're in front of the camera. And, well, you're until right. I go on vacation and then... You're right. I feel like this would be perfect for a mobile Chinese food restaurant. That would be a... That, that is not offensive, and that would be a great idea. Right? I mean, instead of a traditional food truck, you come whipping around the corner in this. Hand-carved, wooden, until it rains. <laughs> you, they could have really shellacked this thing, and you could be okay for a few rains. But, yeah, wouldn't this be a great Chinese restaurant? Oh, that'd, that'd be great. I would sit there and eat at that. Yep. I could, you know, you could pull up to the window and... The, you know, they pull up, you walk up to the window, you order your General Tso's of fried rice, four crab rangoon, good to go. That's like, I just went back to, I hadn't been in a while, Panda Express, and they have their honey 
walnut shrimp. Oh, it's to die for. I know Panda Express isn't really a Chinese restaurant, but delicious. Do what how many hours it took to make that thing? Do they serve Panda there? <laughs> they might. I didn't. I didn't check. I don't know that I'd get that. I don't. I'm, I've never been to a Panda Express. Really? Yeah. It's actually their lo mein noodles are the bomb. Like they are delicious. You like them too, don't you, Greg? The lo mein noodles. I haven't had it. <laughs> okay, moving on. Disappointment. I don't know what's going on in this picture. It, it's kind of like like a like somebody made a Pac Man and it's eaten the <laughs> whatever that is the Oldsmobile or whatever that is up in front. I think it. You're right. It is an attempt because now I see the eyelashes. Yep, and the lips. It's got lips. No way that thing runs. I bet it does. What is the thing next to it? The tower? Is that some kind of like a weird totem pole? I don't know. And then it's got like this disc thing in front of it that I almost feel like it's some kind of a game. Like you put something on that disc thing and it shoots over at the other thing? Could be. <laughs> I have no idea. Like a lot of things that we see in these segments, I have I have no words. No. That's why you just say, what the what? Yeah. What the what? <laughs> so Greer apparently was big on wood carving type yes. things. This one, I feel like you've got to do a little, Tony, you got to be, hey, you know, you got to, it's got that Hawaiian feel to it to me. It's like a tiki hut. I would, I, see, I, I don't see it so much as a tiki hut. As uh-huh. I see it as... Uh, due to deforestation, the Keebler elves had to go mobile. Because <laughs> it's and, and, and it's it's got that little it's got the little dormer up there with the little window that only a Keebler elf could look out of. So yeah, it it, it you know deforestation took the Keebler elves uh, tree factory and they had to go mobile. It's called Yogi's Fine Woodworks. It's pretty cool though. I mean, it is. Great use of a 70, late, uh, late 70s Ford dent side one ton van, kind of line van. Interesting. Okay, Tony, so moving on to this. Now, see, I like this one because I bike all the time. You know that. Yeah. So, <laughs> Sarah, Sarah in the back <laughs> waving at people. No, this is me going by myself, and when I get tired, I go back there and take a little nap. And then I go back to cycling again. But I mean, you that's quite a bit of extra weight. I mean, it's creative. It is. Do you have to sleep standing up in it? I don't know. I mean, or curled up in like yeah, a ball? Probably. I I don't know. I don't I don't know what they've got going on. Yeah. Maybe you know, maybe that little upper bunk is is just a like a bunk bed and there you climb up in there. And I would venture to say that the seat that you sit on to cycle is probably the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, see, that's convenient, too. You don't have to pull over to go to the bathroom. Oh, yeah. You can do all your business at the same time while you're going down the road. Just got a big smile on your face, peddling. Yep, he's going to the bathroom. Yes. <laughs> got your poopery, and you're just, like, spraying it out in front of you. <laughs> well, you know, it wouldn't be so bad for you because you'd have the wind. It would be right. worse <laughs> for the people Everybody behind, behind you. you. Yeah, because yeah. it just, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that'd be bad. So we come to what is usually my favorite segment because yes. I'm on that side of the camera. I'm not super excited about this one because I'm on this side. Right. And I have to admit, Mallory does a great job, but I would say consistently you beat her on the who sold it better. You've got a little bit more creative creativity to your spins. I've seen these, okay? Right. So in, in order to be fair, you get to choose one or two. Greer, have you seen them? Mm-hmm. Which one do I want? One or two? I can't disclose that. <laughs> oh, loyalty, baby. One or two. You know what? I'm I'm just gonna look. They're it's covered. Uh huh. The they're in here. Uh huh. I'm just uh, pulling. I don't feel like you did anything. Like you had one and then two, and you kind of went like this, and then you pulled one. Well, I wasn't sure which one I wanted to pull. Okay, fine. I got multiple fingers. Fine. Fine. There you go. Sell it, Tony. Oh, this is absolutely a stunningly beautiful full-body paint coach. 
Uh, it's a triaxle uh -huh. for uh, towing convenience. More than likely, it it might be a toy hauler. It because of being a triaxle, it could be a toy hauler. It could not be. But uh, three AC units, obviously full body paint, absolutely stunningly beautiful six point automatic leveling jacks. Yeah. <laughs> look at look at the size of the awnings, absolutely stunning. Multiple slides, big pass through storage compartment. Yeah, that's all great, Cody. Yeah, that's great. More ride pin box. Yeah, you did a bang up job. Yeah, I'm so impressed with you. Yeah, well, when when I get like the, <laughs> this is like, this is like being a hitter at the home run derby, and at like every pitch that they send you is like, <laughs> the only thing that would make it, you, I don't, I hit this one off the tee, so this one was pretty easy. <laughs> We've had that one before. We have? Yes. Well, I don't remember it. I like Greer pick stuff today. Yes, we we have had this one before. But so, that's okay. I had to sell it the last time. So, Tony, in the age that we're in today, we're all about energy saving, and we're all about conserving Mother Nature and stuff. And I just want to share with you that I have got the absolute perfect unit for you. Chances are it's not going to move anywhere, so you're not going to consume a lot of energy taking it anywhere. But I have three visible solar panels for you. And these solar panels are going to power God only knows what you keep inside this, but they're going to take real good care of your 13-inch black and white TV screen that you have in there. <laughs> <laughs> your coffee maker that also serves as your grilled cheese maker. Um... A lot of people have fear of missing out. They're afraid that they've left something at home and they need to bring it to the camper. I'm here to tell you that you have literally infinite storage on top of this. And again, since it's not going anywhere, you don't have to worry about strapping it down. You just put it up there. <laughs> um, uh, <laughs> it's got tires and... Um, what I really like is you have a driver's side door that you can you can open up at any time that you want, which is which is a great feature. A very large windshield, and you're gonna really like that. And and a lot of what appear to be working windows to let the breeze in. Um, yeah, I mean, all in all, what more could you want in a Class A motorhome? Oh, I'm gonna add to it because I'm gonna guess that it could possibly be a composting toilet and that could be the pile of compost laying right out there in front <laughs> like like right here at the side that that's your compost see I, it's I'm a so eco-friendly because i'm trying i'm a little worried that this may be a serial killer's rv because i'm not sure that those aren't bone fragments in the composting <laughs> toilet or in the compost pile right there but that's the family you know. burial plot okay it could be yeah. What I also wonder is why do all of the lines on top seem to merge back where I'm assuming like your water hookup and stuff would be? See how everything kind of goes to that spot. Is that just the best tie down spot? Well, I, I think those are the, the power cords coming off the solar panels, if you look. Okay, okay. I think they're the power. And, and so that's going into the... Uh, nuclear, the <laughs> flux capacitor. That's going into the flux capacitor <laughs> for the. Um, my luck. Somebody's going to invent a time machine, and in my mind, it's going to be a DeLorean, which is like you know the coolest time machine. I don't know. Bill and Ted with the phone booth was pretty funny. Did you see they're coming out with a new? new I did. Booth? I did. Uh, Keanu or, Reeves is great. Yes. Period. What's yeah. the? I don't know the other guy's name. He kind of fell off the map after yeah. Bill and Ted. Uh, Bill. Bill. He was great in it. Yeah. yeah he was, was he Bill or was he Ted? Um, I think he's Bill. I think he's Bill. Because it's Ted Theodore. All right, Dan. We're gonna let you wrap it up. Wow, I feel honored. Hey guys, it's been absolute pleasure, Tony. You are a superior talent, and I'm surprised the big national media has not picked you up yet. Um, I had big shoes to fill, but I tried my best. I mean, you know, I just did what I could do, which is try to set the bar even lower to let Mallory rise above <laughs> next week. Uh, guys, keep those photos and videos coming in. We absolutely love them. 
Tune in every Friday for Camping Corner. Make sure and hit that like button uh, or even that subscribe button to keep up with us yeah. and what we're doing. And until next week when I'll be in my more comfortable place, which is the other side of the camera. See you guys. Bye-bye. See you guys.